y'all, Tia Cherie here. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. And if you are returning, thanks for coming back again to check out another video. This is a channel for budding entrepreneurs looking to grow their brand, their income, and their mindset. And in this week's video, we are going to be talking side hustles. So if you're looking to make some extra money, then this is the video for you. I'm gonna be giving you guys six easy steps to starting a service-based business from the comfort of your own home while still working your full-time job. So if you're looking to make some extra money on the side, this video is for you. So make sure you guys keep watching and stay tuned. So as of late, side hustles have been all the rage. Who isn't looking to make more money? I, this is definitely something that I know other people are interested in learning about. And one of the best ways to make some side income is to start a service-based business. There's so many benefits to starting a service-based business. And in this video, I'm going to go through the six easy steps that you can start your own service-based business from home. Step number one in starting a service-based business, decide the type of business you are going to start and your niche. Now, this is literally up to you guys, so you have endless choices. Think first of something that you like to do, something that you wouldn't mind doing, and something that you can get paid to do. Once you decide this, think about who your customer is. Those are some of the things that you should think about because you want to have a good plan and idea of how you can structure your business. So deciding what your business is, who is your customer or your client, what your rate is so that you know how much you can get paid, and also decide what your hours of operation are. Now this is super important if you're still working a full-time job because you're going to have a limited amount of time to where you can work on your business and have it not affect your nine to five. So really sit down, take a look at those topics and those areas and see which works for you. And that's your first step in getting your service-based business off the ground. Step number two, and secure a workspace. Now, if you decided to do a business where you can work from the comfort of your own home, then this step would not apply to you. But if you chose a business to where you either have to go out to your clients or customers, or you have to meet up in a localized space, then this is definitely the second step that you wanna take in starting your business. A good example of this is say you want to be a personal trainer. If you are going to be training clients, you would probably be training clients in a gym or some type of open rec space. So you will wanna secure the area where you're going to be working to ensure that your clients are going to be able to receive your services. And I would also recommend that this area is somewhere that is a affordable for you. So a good example of this is, is say you want to offer personal training services. Awesome, you probably already have a gym membership, so you're already on the right track. You're gonna be in the gym anyway. And now you can have your clients sign up for the same gym that you are working out in and meet you there for your training sessions. So everybody is getting what they need and there isn't much overhead because these are expenses that you would have spent for training anyway. So that's a great option if you are looking to start a service-based business that is outside of the home. Just make sure that you secure that space because you don't wanna get the clients coming in and you have nowhere to work with them. Step number three in starting your service-based business, secure your social media accounts. This is super important, especially if you plan on doing your marketing and advertising for your services via social media. You wanna come up with your company name and make sure that that name is available on whatever social media sites that you plan to be working on. So for instance, if your company's name is ABC Dance, you wanna make sure that you have an ABC Dance page on Instagram that's available, Facebook available, Twitter, etc. Wherever you feel like you will be working to secure your business, business, you need to have those accounts set up. Your accounts, especially social media, are going to be an online profile of your services, which is just going to bring you more clientele. So you wanna make sure you have a good online presence. With that step is securing your business email and business phone number. Now these are great because this is something that is free cost to you. All you have to do is go on Google and open up a Gmail account. Open up an account under your same business name so there isn't any confusion when you're giving out your contact information to people looking for your services. And you can also set up a Google Voice account if you want a phone number specific for your business. And this is also free to you, so you don't have to worry about that. 
Some people obviously have a cell phone, the majority of people have a cell phone, but maybe you don't wanna give out your personal phone number. So if you don't wanna give out your personal phone number, a great way to be able to stay in contact with your clientele is to get a Google Voice number and that will be your business number that you can use. I would also recommend if you have the funds and if you want to, getting a separate phone for business. Now, if you have an old phone laying around that you haven't really used, maybe you can go to your service provider and get another line opened up on this phone so that you know for sure when your phone is ringing that this is a business call. You don't want to confuse it and you know maybe you just don't want to answer the phone and you might be missing out on a customer. So that's a great option if you have the extra funds or an extra phone but if not Google Voice will do just fine. And with setting up accounts I would recommend getting your website and or landing page together. You don't have to have a website as soon as you launch your business. You can give yourself time to build up to a website. You can get your first few clients and make sure that your business is something that you want to continue doing before you invest hundreds or thousands of dollars in a website. But having a space where someone can easily get to you was makes it a lot easier for you to stay in contact with your client. If you have the funds, I would definitely say get a website. But if that's not something that's available to you right now, just use your social media accounts for now as your profile of getting yourself out there in front of your future clients. Step number four in starting a service-based business, advertise your services. So you've done everything else. You've picked the name, you've picked what you want to do. You got your social media accounts together. Now it's time to advertise. We need clients booking services and coming through this door so that we can make money. There is no limit to where you can advertise your services. Some of the most popular things obviously are social media, Google, Yelp, Groupon and word of mouth. Those are all great ways to get your services out there and find your new clients. Now, as we mentioned in the prior tip, social media. Social media is huge. Everybody's on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, you name it, everybody is everywhere. So getting your business out there and having a good presence on those platforms will just help you grow and help you bring in future clientele. Make sure your social media profiles are set up to where you have good pictures and or videos depending on what services you offer. You can also have some rates or some of the things that are associated with your services. A good example of this is, again, if you wanna be a personal trainer, you should have a social media account where you're doing workouts. So that way your clients can see what it is that they're gonna be doing if they sign up for your services. And if you already have clientele, as long as you get permission, make sure you ask them if you can tape some videos of you working out with them, or maybe they wouldn't mind providing a testimonial for you or a review for you so that you can post these on your social media accounts and give yourself more validation and build trust with your clients that are looking to book your services. Look into getting a business account for Yelp which is going to be able to help you advertise your services to people who may not come across your social media. You can put up all your information, your rates, your location, the services you offer, pictures, get yourself in front of people who may not be on social media. Not everybody's on Instagram or Facebook, but maybe they are on Yelp just happening to look for your services in their area. Another great option, especially if you're a brand new business, is Groupon. Now, I personally I personally have some expertise with this because I was running Groupon ads when I started my eyelash business. And it's a great way to gain new clientele. Now, the thing about it is you're going to have to offer your services at a discounted rate, which you might not love the idea, but the idea is to grow your clientele. So half of something is better than nothing. So having half your services paid for, but getting a new client, as long as you're doing exactly what you're supposed to do and doing a great job, having great customer service, 
doing whatever it is that they've paid you to do, more often than not, they will not have a problem rebooking you at your standard rate. So now luckily, or to gain a client that you might not have had before through this Groupon ad, your business isn't generating its own clientele and its own customers, putting yourself out there in more areas and getting more exposure for your business just helps the numbers game when it comes to getting new clients. Step number five in growing your service-based business, offer incentives and discounts. Now, if anybody knows me, they know I love a good discount and I love a good sale, and most people do. People wanna feel like they're saving money or like they're getting something extra for the money that they're spending, so this is a great way to help build your business up. As far as incentives, if you already have a particular client and you're looking to get more clients, then you need to use what you already have. So you would offer your current client an incentive to help bring you new clientele. So say for instance, you are a tutor and you are tutoring a student and you know that this student probably has a friend or two that are struggling in this same math class and they need help as well. So what you can offer to this student and the student's parents is to say, hey, I'm helping your son out with, you know, calculus 101 and I know that there are other students in the class that may need assistance. If you guys wouldn't mind sharing my services with them, I can give you two to three tutoring lessons free for every person that you bring me. Now this is a great incentive because the parent is already paying for your services. And of course they would want to save some money. So that's a great way to help bring more clientele to you and help to grow your business. Another great way is offering a discount. Now this is great, especially if you're doing some beauty like hair or nails or so say for instance, for new customers, you offer 10% off of all services. Or maybe you do five manicures and the sixth manicure is free. Little things like that really help people stay consistent with booking your services because they eventually want to get to that discount. And like I said, people love to save money. So if you're looking to grow your business and grow your clientele, offering incentives and discounts is a great way to do that. And step number six, attend community events and vendor events. Now, depending on what type of service-based business you have, this option may be great or not so much, but say for instance, you offer tutoring services. Let's use this again. You offer a tutoring service, attending a community event like a fair event at the school is a great way to advertise and market your services. It's a lot easier to get to know somebody by meeting them in person at an event as opposed to just coming across their page on Facebook. It builds a great relationship of trust which will help people more than likely book services. Vendor events, just like community events, are a great way for you to get in front of your future clients and to build that trust and that connection with them. Vendor event is essentially an event where different vendors come together to advertise and market and sell whatever products or services that they have. You are a hairstylist and you decide that you wanna do a vendor event and you have a model there and you're doing a hairstyle on her. A live demonstration of the services that you offer. And who doesn't wanna see what they probably are going to be paying for in the future? I know I would. Really take advantage of these community events and these vendor events because it will help you get out there and get in front of people, especially those in your community. More often than not, people will patron businesses that are in their area. You want to make sure that you're out in front of them, especially if you're in the community, to let them know that you're there and you're there to help them. So get yourself out there at those community events and get those clients. That was the six steps in starting a service-based business from home while working your full-time job. Now, it's a lot of other steps to starting a service-based business, but those are the main things that you need to get your business up and running. So leave me some comments below, maybe some service-based businesses that you are already working yourself. I would love to hear from you guys. And thank you so much for checking out another video. If you like this video, please make sure that you guys show me that you liked it by liking 
liking, subscribing, commenting, and sharing. And when you subscribe, please make sure that you turn on that notification bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. I have new videos coming for you every week on Tuesdays and Fridays, so there will be more of these to come. Make sure that you guys tune into my next video where we will be giving six side hustle ideas for service-based businesses. So in this video, I taught you how to get the businesses together and up and running. And in the next video, I'm going to be giving you actual business ideas if you're still stuck on trying to figure out what type of service you can offer. So make sure you guys check out that next video. It was a pleasure talking to you and I can't wait to see you on the next one. Talk soon, bye.